Oh wow, you wouldn't believe what's happened now. This is the one with the new engine, new turbo, the one with the melted fuse. We've worked out most likely what's caused it. And if this happens to, do, to you, you're gonna wanna know what to do. I've got quite a bit of information for you to share here. And this is gonna be a really interesting story. You know, it's like, it's not something you really appreciate at three o'clock in the morning. Um, this job, it was all done and complete. The engine was running beautiful. I'll just show you that. Firstly, let's just recap a little bit of information with the process, what's happened with this vehicle before we received it. So then what happened afterwards can start to make a bit more sense. And what we're talking about, it's all about this fuse here that's melted and getting woken up at two or three o'clock a.m. in the morning. Okay, so um, obviously the, co the client contacted us uh, for the engine replacement based on a cracked piston diagnosis by a RACV Prado 1KD FTV professional. Um, so it was coming for the engine, but it turned up on the tow truck. A few things the driver said, you know, it made me a bit suspect that something was going on. This battery, important bit of information, this battery, dead flat. That one didn't look at it too much, but I think it was 10 or 11 volts or something like that. So fairly flat as well. Um, the car was dead. You couldn't power it up to turn, unlock the steering. You couldn't do anything. It was completely dead. Batteries on two volts. But I hadn't checked the battery. What's easier, grabbing the multimeter or popping the cover off the fuse thing in case that was blown because it was dead. So that's what I did. And I saw that and I didn't look closely and I thought it was blown and melted. Um, but while I was doing videos, I was looking at it going, actually, it doesn't look like it's blown. And when I tested it later, I found it that it wasn't blown. So the fuse is not blown. Okay. This is all relevant information in the big picture. <coughs> and there's going to be some bonus information in here. But... It's really going to help you in the end and you're going to go, wow, that's what happened. So the suspense is killing you, right? So battery's dead. I've checked that. I've gone, oh, it's the fuse. Grab the camera. Let's do a video and show her on this thing before it's too late. And I wish I had a camera at 2 o'clock this morning as well, by the way. But I'll just run you through what happened in a moment. Um, basically, I've charged up. This is before the job. So I went, oh, I've gone, as I said in videos, I want to know what's going on here before I spend 15 or 20 grand or do 15 to 20 grand worth of work here, because if we've got a bigger problem, we need to sort that out first so the car doesn't burn to the ground or, you know, I'm exaggerating a bit, maybe. Just depends on the whole circumstances and what the cause is really, doesn't it? But, um, so we, we spent a lot of time trying to work out what's going on. I didn't really come up with anything that made sense. You know, the alternator has been replaced. It's working fine. Starter motor looks original, seemed to be working fine. Um, auto electric, this is not my wiring, it's not how I would do it, anything like that. The battery over the other side, it's over five years old, it's rubbish, because I charged this battery, which then connected to that battery, so the charger was pumping it, charging this battery and that battery, a lot of charging. It only took about an hour, or probably say two hours, before this was on 12.7, and I went, you know what, let me try and start this car, and that's when it started. Depending what order I drop the videos, there'll be a lot of videos on this car and other cars in between, maybe or not. But there's a lot of videos, short ones, long ones, all important information. So subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss it. Hit the like button if you like it so you get more of that stuff in your YouTube feed. I think it helps you and helps me and everyone's happy. Where's the problem, right? Bada bing, bada boom. So I've charged it all up. I've started the car. I've got the video showing. Yep, cracked piston, running on three cylinders, took the cap off and all that, right? So we're in business. We can't see anything else wrong, why this has happened, it's not blown. We're going to need to replace it later for sure, but I was still going, well, why has it happened? I still didn't know why it happened. So we did our thing, we put the engine in. As it turned out, the turbo was rubbish as well, so we had to put a turbo on it as well. That's the first time it's happened where the, the engine was gone and the turbo, it was quite rare as far as I'm concerned because the internal seal that's a common problem on turbos where you get, you know, where you get a runaway, the oil comes through and whatever. That was the situation here, right? So it was sucking the oil from the intake into the engine, which gave it a good lubrication for startup and all that, I guess, running procedures. Nice clean oil out of the engine, whatever. So it's all good. But um, yeah, obviously we had to sort that out. So we went through the diagnosis process, which will probably come in videos or already has, depending when this one comes out. It's a bit exciting. So I want to tell you about it and, uh, Hopefully you have a bit of entertainment and a bit of wow factor as well. So that's what the deal, we finished that. You, as you saw, it was all running well. It was all done and dusted yesterday. Road test, final checks, happy days. Um, ready to give it back to the customer other than he said, yep, no, let's sort this out. So we're gonna take it back to one of our other workshops and get one of our helpers to take care of replacing that fuse. 
there and try and get a video on and show you how to do it so if that ever happens to you if you short out the battery you know jump starting working on the vehicle alternators short circuit bang you'll pop that fuse and it'll be a real pain to change so again that's what i'm saying subscribe to the balance so you don't miss this stuff um so i'm going to show you how to change that i've already told you in other videos how to avoid that you want to avoid that one i'm going to try and show you how to change that anyway like i said it's just timing it's it's hours of work it's hard you kind of sit there with the camera for hours so we'll try and get the important parts into a video and try and keep it short for the people that haven't got the patience but it'll be what it is. it'll be a random video we'll give you what we can you know it'll be better than anyone else's videos because my videos we do in detail we show you the detail you need to know and um, often we explain why it needs to be done that way yeah i know the suspense is killing you but i like to explain things right and this one's probably i'm going to say it's probably going to go for 20 minutes now so the job's done you know how it came in, you know it was, because the battery was flat, not the fuse was blown because we charge it all up. That battery is rubbish, this battery is good, it's only about two years old. The fuse is not blown, it's just melted, the engine's new, it runs beautiful, happy days, everything's good, you know, it's got a new fuel filter and a new cabin filter because that was rotten, you might have seen that in those videos. This vehicle, there's a lot of videos talking about is standard maintenance okay at the moment, because that's what this vehicle's had, this is your mechanic just doing standard maintenance, an oil change, change your brakes when you need them and see you later, right? There's nothing else, all the usual things. You really need to start looking closely at vehicles yourself or take it to a specialist once you're keeping vehicles that have done over 200,000 k's, 250, 300, 350, 400. It's not just take it down to my car, right? That's why people are watching these videos, I get it, but there's a lot of people that aren't, okay? So send it to your friends that aren't watching these videos and tell them, look, you just need to be patient with this guy. He talks a lot. But he's got a lot of information, and that's why I'm talking now. I'm explaining it, trying to... The wise people are going to listen and hang around. So, it's all good. Close up the workshop for the long weekend, right? No, wrong. There's no long weekend for Anthony this weekend. Anyway, that's all right. Um, close up the workshop, and I'm going to... The final road test on the engine jobs is usually... Um, the, the Prado Hilux Engine Replacement Hospital is near Bendigo. And um, the final road test is driving the car, usually driving it from there back down to Melbourne because quite often people are interstate and they're coming to the airport or they could be closer to town, whatever. So I like to do the big road test anyway to make sure everything's Mickey Mouse. And then we can do yet again more final checks once we get to the workshops uh, you know, around Melbourne sort of thing. You know, people that watch the videos and listen know where we're at. We are Melbourne-based, northwest side. We've got a couple of workshop partners here and there, pretty well got it covered. Get yourself on the videos, get yourself the parts kits, you'll be in, get yourself in the VIP group, and then you'll see who the workshop partners are, or you can work, ask there, out in the public group. So we can't just name everyone and go here, there, because there's not enough of them, and they'll be just overrun with work, and we just can't do everyone's car, which is why I do the videos to teach you, and which is why we've got to do it this way. But if you really want someone, you've just got to keep watching videos, and like now, I've been talking a bit, but I'm explaining to people how it works, right? So you watch a lot of videos, you work out you need injectors, you work out you need a BFE kit, you work out you need front wheel bearings, any of these things you work out, you work out that you wouldn't buy injectors anywhere but from me because you might end up with those counterfeit copies, the remanufactured, whatever, even if they told you they're new, mixed up in the boxes, there's a whole heap of confusion. Everyone's confused except me. I reverse send it back to them and educate them on what the remands are and how to work it out, right? So not saying, you know, I'm better than anyone else. I'm just saying because I specialise in it, I tend to know more than everyone else about it. So enough of that crap. Keep watching the videos and you'll figure it out. Now, three o'clock in the morning, this engine starts cranking. <laughs> so that's it, right? So... Right, I've got the car parked outside the house, ready to, uh, you know, head head down there for the final road test and park it up and then uh, talk to the client and just let them know where it's at at the moment and then continue with getting this replaced, whatever. But it's lucky this happened because we didn't really have it. It's all sort of coming together now, but I need to explain to you in a bit more detail of how I'm understanding it. So we didn't really know why this melted. It's not blown. It's still not blown. We didn't know why it melted. We didn't know if it's an alternator problem. A lot of people put things in the comments, you know, because thanks for helping. And I know some people are just having a guess and helping. And, but there's some people that know more than everybody else. And that's cool as well. But guess what? Everybody was wrong. Um, people talking about the starter motor being this and that and the other. Well, there's nothing wrong with the starter motor. 
other than it decided to crank and that's a problem if it's just going to decide to crank and just keep going and it's not going to stop and constantly do that so then this happens bang i'm pretty quick out of bed in the middle of the night so don't mess with me but um yeah, i'm in the dark i haven't got a 10 mil spanner because my first look let's just rewind a minute i'll give you a bit more on this specific situation but years ago about five years ago i had a friend of mine contact me the next day he didn't ring me at two o'clock in the morning but he goes hey Anth. he goes mate you're not going to believe this sit down you know like what i'm kind of saying whatever i put the name of this video i don't know what to call it anyway put it in the comments i might even change it after it's out but um i'll work it out hopefully but there's a lot of info in here you need to know about starter relays and whatever so it's going to go on a little bit yet um he goes hey you're not going to believe what's happened I go, okay, well, tell me, you know. Stop holding me in suspense like what I'm doing for you, Phil. He goes, mate, 2 o'clock in the morning, the car's trying to start. I came out, I thought someone was going to steal, trying to steal the car, you know what I mean? And, of course, that would be your normal thought. And if I didn't hear this story before, I might have read it one other time somewhere on one of the Facebook groups, which means, has this only ever happened, if I've heard of it twice now, it's probably happened five or ten times out of all the Praders. I don't know. I have any put in the comments, has anyone heard of this? Anyone? And I'm going to tell you why I think it's the starter motor and why I think it, that's what's caused that and all sorts of things. More info coming. So anyway, he goes, blah, blah, blah. I said, what did you do? What did you do? He goes, mate, it wouldn't stop. You know, I'm hitting the button, holding the key and all that. And he goes, Does, doesn't matter what it did, it wouldn't stop. I don't know if he powered it up and started and, st and whatever. You can start the engine. You can stop the engine. I'm giving you all the info here, right? Because this is what I did. Because I, I went, I'm going to try a few things. I'm trying to do it quick. I've come out in the dark, empty-handed. I'm in my jocks. I've slipped on a pair of thongs at three o'clock in the morning, it's nine degrees, and pop the bonnet in this car, right? Picture this, people. <laughs> it's worth hanging around, right? And I've gone, I've popped the bonnet, I've gone, ah, no ten, and I know what we've done up this, it's gonna to be too tight to just pull the battery terminal off. So I've popped this, I've quickly looked at the lid, and I've gone, start a relay. I've tried to pull what I thought was, and I haven't spent time looking at what the starter relay is. I don't know which one it is, that's not what I do, you know? There's nothing wrong with the starter relay ever, so. I'm not, you know, 100%, but I'm like, yeah, I think it's that one. And I'm trying, and it's bloody tight, and, you know, and I just, I couldn't get it out. I went, what now, what now? So I run back up, get the torch, come back with the torch. Still got no 10 mil. What do I do? What do I do? Do I want a dead car here sitting outside the house? Or, so what do I do? I get in the car, I start the car again. Again, you just power it up and it starts. Starter motor's still spinning, you know. So it's, the starter motor's cooking. It's probably, I don't know, cut a few minutes at this stage, probably three or four minutes, I'm going to guess. I drive up to the workshop, park outside the roller. I haven't got a remote in this car. So I quickly go there, get, get into that car to get a remote, open the door, get in the shed, turn the lights on, open the bonnet. Um, I can smell a lot of really hot sort of, you know, hot smell. You know, this starter motor's cooking. That's what was copping the brunt of it, what was cooking. The starter motor was, would have been real hot. I wouldn't have liked to, I wouldn't put your tongue on that one, right? Wouldn't even like to touch it, to be honest. Wouldn't even like to hold it with a set of leather gloves, I reckon it would have been that hot. So I didn't have time to muck around with this at this point, but I'll get to that. So then I've gone, you know, it's, it's sitting here. Okay, and I actually had it running because I didn't want the battery to go flat, to be quite honest. And I've gone, okay, quick, grab a set of gloves, grab a 10 mil, bang, put the, you know, the not the thin gloves to keep clean, the, you know, a bit of protection because um, I'm going to start grabbing a few things and ripping things off in a minute. <laughs> Rip your fingers open at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so I've then I've loosened the 10 mil over here on the negative, which is this is what I'm going to recommend. If this happens to you, this is what you need to do. So it's almost you know how a 10 mil is really handy. Keep it in your driver's door. Get yourself a cheap 10 mil. Make sure it works on your battery terminal. Comes in handy for lots of things. 10 mil lost my 10 mil. Make sure you got an extra 10 mil. Everyone's going down a super cheap now just to buy another 10 mil spanner to keep in the car, or if you've got a spare one, an old one, a small one, right? So I've gone, I've loosened this off, engine's still running, I'm just loosening a little bit, and then I go around, I hit the stop button, the engine stops, it's still bloody cranking away, it's probably seven or eight minutes, I didn't have the time, I didn't have a phone to have a camera, otherwise I would have videoed the whole bloody thing, it was unbelievable, the starter motor was starting to smoke, I could smell it, right? So, so I've just, bang, ripped the negative terminal off, and obviously everything's gone dead, which, you know, that's going to be a bit of a scary thing for a lot of people as well. So it's not the normal thing you do, you know what I mean? And even worse, obviously, I guess, if you're going to go to put it back on, 
Um, you kind of want it, if you've got to put it back on, then you're going to sort of want to smash it on quick, not muck around, because there's going to be sparks flying everywhere. So a nice clean, boom, straight on sort of connection. So get it nice and square if you've got to put it back on. Um, so now I'm just going to go through a few things. So that's what happened. And then it was smelling a lot. Um, then there's a bit of smoke coming off, and I'm thought, do I throw some water on it? Do I get a fire extinguisher ready? Yep, I can see three fire extinguishers from my own. One, two, three, yep. So I thought, I was, you know, I'm on plan. I'm like, okay, I'm going to shut the bonnet on this thing if it goes up in flames, you know, starve it of air. No, I'm not going to do that. And, I thought, and then I thought, I got the blower, and I thought, I'll put some air over it, even though air fuels fires. It's not a fire. I'm going to put some air over it. And hopefully it cools down, and if it goes up in flames, then I didn't think it was going to. I'm just talking out loud. I'm thinking out loud here. Right, so put the blower on it, cool it down a bit. The thing stinks, you know what I mean? And I'm out here on my own, in my jocks, in the thongs, nine degrees, and it's all happening, right? So hope you're all having a laugh. And I can imagine for old mate who contacted me over five years ago, friend of mine, I'm, I can just see him that time. So look, I didn't have a thought for a second that um, anyone was, you know, stealing the car or anything like that. Nobody's going to be doing anything like that, right? Boom! Anyway, um, <clears throat> so as soon as I heard it, I kind of knew, yep, that's that. But what I've learned from this whole experience, it's good that it's happened because it's made me now over the last half an hour investigate a few possibilities possible causes and I'm sure there's some auto elects and people out there that are smarter than me and I'm looking forward to those comments. Try and keep it short, neat and understandable for everybody else and me. Um, long, I know it's got to be long to explain it but no need to do a long explanation unless you absolutely know the answers to the questions or the concerns that might come up in the rest of this video. So what my conclusion is, once I stopped it, the first thing I did is took the gloves off and I went like that, and had a bit of a feel around. And yes, it was very warm, right? So that sort of says to me that that starter motor cranking the whole time, everything's going through this view. Well, it's kind of, it kind of not really, because you've got a direct connection from here to the starter on the positive. That's your problem, right? So it's always got the massive amount of power there, and no fuse is my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I haven't gone and had a look. I'm just going off cars in general, and we generally they have that all the way there. And then you've got a separate wire that's activated via your switch with relays and whatever to kick the solenoid and away you go, right? So um, there is a starter relay here, I believe, because I was looking at the inside. So what I did, you know, first, one of the first things I was going to do was try and pull that out, right? So I've opened up this. Just going to show you. This is not my expertise, right? This is just a common sense bloke um, trying to work it out. So I've pulled this off, right? And have a look here. It says... ST, right? I guess that was starter because the air suspension and glow plugs, they, they realise they're pretty big. I go, well, I had a quick little, you know, I spent about 30 seconds. Uh, no, it's not going to be a few. I go, I reckon that's it. So I tried to pull it out. It was just tight. It wouldn't come out. So look, I didn't have a lot of time. So I gave up on it pretty quickly because that's what I had to do. And obviously got up here with a 10 millimeter and got it disconnected. So just for the record, you can try it if you like, but this one here, I believe, 100%, I don't believe it, that is the startup motor relay. But if you'd press the switch, then it'd go through the relay and all that sort of thing. And if it was cranking and I actually pulled that out, to be quite honest, because of the way it's faulting, if you got it cranking somehow with the key and pulled that out, it'd probably stop. But because of the way it's cranking, because of a fault, I believe, at the starter motor, um, pulling this out wouldn't have made any difference, I believe. Now, you can start the car, you can pull this fuse out, it keeps running. Obviously, the starter motor won't run via the key, the push button or anything, if you've got this pulled out. So don't worry too much about that if this happens to you, because it's not going to help. But from this happening and me going, okay, that's hot, okay, then I look, then I rewind back, you know, and I go, okay. So the car came on a tow truck, the battery was dead flat. This battery was flat, which is unusual. I'm like, where did it go? I talked to the client. He goes, oh, the battery was fine. And then the battery's flat. We don't, you know, you can leave a light on. You know, you get that. It, it drains it a bit, but then you jump start it enough to drive it on a tow truck or turn the steer, things like that. Or RACV guy checking out, puts a bit of charge in. So I don't know at what point it went flat, but what I believe's happened, as what you can probably tell I'm getting to, is this fault has happened about a week ago. So he's... He's cracked the piston. It's got picked up on the tow truck. It's been taken there. I haven't talked to him yet. That's my next call. It's going to be, you know, did someone wash the engine or something like that? Because 
old mate that happened to him over five years ago, I said, did you happen to wash the engine today? And I can't remember now, but I think his answer was yes, but not much, just like a quick rinse down, whatever. And I'm thinking, well, maybe water got to your starter motor and something happened in there because he, it never happened to him again. So I've got to give you all the information, right? So he disconnected the battery. It stopped. He went back to bed and went, bloody hell. Probably if he got to, like me, I was probably another hour or so trying to get back to sleep, thinking about it. Couldn't stop thinking about it, right? But anyway, got to sleep in the end, got a, got a, couple, got a little bit more. Um, for him, he reconnected it when he got up in the morning. No problem as he has never had any problem ever since with that starter motor. So isn't that, that's the first part. So I kind of go, is that just a random thing? How many other people has it happened to? How many people got flat batteries? They don't know why and it's never happened again. Um, how tough are these starter motors? They're just absolutely awesome, which is why you stick with genuine if you can, but that's of course up to the customer because the retail price is over $1,000 for a genuine starter motor for a 150 Prado. Um, and there's not a massive discount at all for whatever reason in some items, including starter motors for us trade customers. So basically there's nothing in it, I'll say. Um, so he, he's put it in, he's still driving the car, never had any issues whatsoever. Now this one, I'm taking a guess, but I'm taking an edumacator guess that the reason this battery was two volts and that's melted is before. So he's had the crack, that's what I'm saying, he's had the crack piston, tow truck's got there. At some point in the middle of the night, it might be a two or three o'clock in the morning thing, it's probably the only time it happens. Let us know in the comments if it's happened to you or you know someone, because this is a rare thing. I haven't really heard of this really much at all. Um, I've never had it myself. I've never had to work on a vehicle that's had that happen. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the starter motor. I'll get to that in a minute. I mean, you've got a lot to say, but it's all we're discussing this here. So, yep, yeah, okay, battery's flat. This is melted. This happens last night with the starter motor. That's hot again. That information tells me that this fault happened at some time while the vehicle was parked about a week ago before we got the car. It's cranked in the middle of the night. This battery, until it's gone dead flat, and while in doing so, it's melted this fuse. Does that make sense to all the auto elects and all the experts that know more than me? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so lucky we didn't just go ahead and change that fuse. Lucky we delayed it. Lucky we put the engine in. Lucky this happened. Otherwise, we'd do all the work, massive work to change that, and it would just maybe happen again unless somebody heard it in the middle of the night, which they didn't last time, and they didn't stop it like I did. I took a fair bit of time, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to be better prepared, I'll tell you what, this thing. It's a bit like, you know, your survival kit. You take your survival knife with you, and now you need to take a 10 mil. Imagine you're out bush, right? So if you're out camping somewhere in the middle of the night, do 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 Mate, if that flattens your battery or you whatever, you're stuffed, you know what I mean? That's what, I suppose, a good reason to carry a spare starter motor on our trips. Everybody with 1KDs, we've got a spare starter and a spare alternator. Sometimes more than one alternator and more than one starter, but you want to have at least one between you's if you can, you know, and the tools, of course, to change it and a bit of practice in changing them is also worthwhile, which is why you watch the videos because it's a bit of practice for you by watching us and you might have a crack yourself and that's practice. Um, every now and then we can have a tech day and we get the new starter motor and the alternator and we let everyone have a go of putting it on and off their car, that sort of thing. Uh, waste a bit of time, right? But, you know, I don't think we'll do that anymore because it's pretty straightforward. It's only a few volts. We've got videos on it. Um, so pretty confident that's what's happened. Um, what's happened with me, I've come out this morning, probably eight, nine o'clock this morning, next day, and I've, I've gone, okay, you, are you ready for this? Sparks are going to fly, so I'll put the gloves on again, and I've got the battery turned on, and I've gone, boom, straight on. You probably can't quite see it, but yeah, there it is. It, it's on, it's connected, but it is loose. I haven't tightened it up yet. I'm ready to pull it off, because at any moment, as far as I'm concerned, that starter motor could start cranking. Now, I haven't got a starter motor here. I can rip one out of another car. Why do I think it's a starter motor? Well, quite simply, if it was us pressing the button and going through the relay and the normal systems to activate the starter motor, then it wouldn't have activated because we haven't done that. And if there's a fault in something else, like the relay or whatever, I just don't think that's happened, to be quite honest. I think it's a fault down at the starter motor because it's just going and you can't stop it by starting, stopping, activating all the usual systems. Um, so I'm taking a, a guess, really, that... The only thing there, it's got the direct power. There's something going on in that solenoid. Something's shortened out or enough something to activate to get that thing cranking. And um, bada bing, that's what's happened. But it's a rare problem. I'm not the auto electrical guru extraordinaire that knows is there something else in the system here 
that can cause that starter motor to crank that's not down at the starter motor something before here like i said like i said i believe it was cranking if i pulled this relay nothing would happen because we haven't activated for it to start if you know what i mean so if this happens to you a have your 10 mil ready get your negative battery terminal off b you're probably not going to melt a fuse unless this happens to you that's why we believe it's happened so now we're going to talk to the customer, see about a new starter motor because there's no point leaving that one there. It's too risky. It's happened twice now. Once is once, but twice is pushing it. Um, I'm not going to leave this battery connected overnight. It's not going to be left unsupervised um, until it's got a new starter motor or until it's out of my hands. Um, so yeah, customers' options, what they want to do, of course. Um, so I'm going to be very careful of that. 10 mil is going to be in the pocket. I will drive it down to one of the other workshops to do the starter motor and uh, this other work. This is the engine replacement hospital. We can do some other work here, but you know, we don't keep all massive supply of other parts and it's just not really convenient to be honest. So I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit and do that because I believe it'll be okay. And if it's not, well then if I hear some weird noise, I'm gonna stop the side of the road and uh, disconnect the battery and that's where we'll be. And maybe I'll try and reconnect it Maybe I won't, maybe it'll be a tow truck. So remember that, REC Total Care, because that's what will have it covered and get it back to where we want it at zero cost and minimal inconvenience, depending what day of the week it is and where you are and that sort of thing. Um, I'm pretty, sh pretty sure we sort of nailed it there. I don't know what else we could add in there. I guess the final thing we could do to uh, for your entertainment is go and start the engine. Just make sure that's all the way down. It's not tight, but it's all the way down. You wouldn't drive around like that. You'll hit bumps, it'll come off, that sort of thing. We'll go start it up. We can have a listen to the starter motor and the engine, and it'll be a butter bing, butter boom. beautiful is that for a nice cold 1kd and like i said and you wouldn't even believe me so how tough are these starter motors unbelievable man i mean it's flattened a battery once it's been running the whole time while i even started and stopped the engine at three o'clock in the morning unbelievable then i stopped the engine it's still running it was had smoke pouring off it okay you know coming up from sort of you know up around through it was smoke coming it was coming off the starter motor the bloody thing was cooking okay so any assistance in the comments from anyone that knows more than me, that'd be appreciated. Knows them more than me on this subject. Like I said, I don't say I know everything and I know more than everyone else. There's plenty of people that know more than me on a lot of subjects. I just know a lot of general information and I'll get good at these things because that's what we do. But this is not something that I do, but I'm getting better at it. And I've got, I don't need to hold all my secrets and my experiences and take it with me. I need to share it with you guys so you can all learn from me. So like I said it earlier on, subscribe, turn the bell on so you can learn some stuff, especially if you've got a motor vehicle. Thanks for watching. I don't know what else I can add into the video, but that's a big, long, bada-bing, bada-boom. Catch on the next one.